What's going on YouTube? So the XC90 is one of those beautiful designs that never seems to age, which is why it continues to be such a popular choice in the heavily competitive three row luxury segment. And today we're in the latest 2024 model in its ultimate trim level to see what Volvo has done to evolve this beautiful SUV. So is this still a great buy or should you wait for that fully electric EX90? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so let's get things started here under the hood. So the XC90 will continue to be offered with the same three powertrain arrangements as last year. That's gonna be B5, B6, and then your top model, this T8 Recharge. That means it is a plug-in hybrid, combining a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with a powerful rear electric motor and an 18.8 .8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. Total system, 455 horsepower. As far as the transmission is concerned, you're looking at an eight speed automatic. All wheel drive is standard across the board for the XC90. And as far as all electric range for this plug-in hybrid, we're sitting at 32 miles of EPA estimated range. That being said, we do have a car confections real world range test that you won't want to miss out on. So go ahead and check that video out as well. But of course, uh, we're just getting started with this video. So we want you to stick around and take a look at the exterior because there's an update we want to talk about with the outside. So what is that exterior change? Well, if you remember last year, Volvo reshuffled how they oriented things and they had design themes. So you had a dark theme instead of the previous R design model. Now that is going to be gone for 2024. So you only have just the bright theme. That of course is gonna be what we have here today. So as you can see, otherwise you are left with the same clean, classy look that this XE90 has always had. That signature Volvo grill through here, again, finished in all the nice silver and chrome elements for the bright themed model. And you do also have some more of that down here at the bottom part. I also wanna talk about our headlights. These of course are very premium headlights. They're gonna be standard on all models. Full LED with the Thor's hammer, daytime running light and turn signal indicator. These are also adaptive. And then all models will come with fog lamps except for the T8 recharge models. For whatever reason, those will not come with fog lamps. As we move around to the rear, of course, no Volvo SUV would be complete without having a clean, classy, and sophisticated design, plus those signature Volvo elements, such as the full-length LED taillights. Well, let's see if all the elements are LED. Drew, go ahead and hop inside, and let's see. We do have an LED brake light, LED turn signal indicator, but check out our reverse light here. That is actually gonna be an incandescent bulb. Um, I'm a little disappointed by that. Other Volvos actually have full, full LED taillights, including the reverse light. Not on this XC90 though. This is one of the elements where it's showing a little bit of its age, but the taillight design itself is beautiful and I really have no other complaints other than that. Volvo spelled out across the back. As we head down to this lower bumper area, all this is gonna be finished in a nice body color. We have a little chrome to spice up the design. No exposed exhaust outlets on any XC90. That was eliminated back in 2020. And as far as your tow rating, it's 5,000 5, pounds, excuse me, for B6 and T8 models. Next up, let's talk about the wheel options. You do have a lot of them, as you'd expect, starting at 19 inches and ranging all the way up to the 21 inch alloy wheels you see here. Those are going to come with the ultimate model. Uh, you do have some different design choices here as well, but these are very nice looking. I like the contrast elements, especially in comparison to the magic blue paint color that you see here on this model. Now, as we move up here to our mirrors, fully loaded with all the features, no messing around here. So blind spot monitoring, auto dimming, power folding, and heating. Now at this side of the XC90, nothing's gonna change in terms of the overall design or length for 2024. We're still coming in at 195 inches long, um, which compared to other three row SUVs, that's gonna be on the shorter end. It depends on what you're comparing it to though. Uh, it's gonna make for a pretty decent amount of interior space as you'll see later on in this drive. Now, one other 2024 change I do wanna talk about is that they've replaced the really cool thunder gray color with the also really cool vapor gray 
gray paint color that we see on the EX90. And I do also want to talk about safety when it comes to this XC90 because this is a Volvo after all and it's also a three row family SUV. So you want it to be safe for everyone inside and indeed that is going to be the case for this model. You're gonna have all four of your active safety features as standard equipment and that does even include a pilot assist function which helps you uh, drive on the highway when you have the adaptive cruise control active. But guys, that's going to wrap up the exterior design of this XC90. And if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's move on to the interior. Of course, as you expect for a luxury SUV, you do have a standard smart entry system. This is the typical Volvo key fob, nice square shape to it. And of course, to get inside, just grab behind the handle that will unlock the door and fold the mirrors outward. And taking a look inside of the cabin, you're not gonna notice any huge design changes for 2024, but we do have a kind of unusual option, which I'm getting ready to talk about as we talk about materials and color options. So. Your base model is going to come standard with leatherette seating. Once you move up to plus, you'll get real leather seating. And once you get up to the ultimate, that's going to come standard with full Napa leather seating. But you're noticing we don't actually have that. That's because we have the, like I said, unusual option of a full wool seat. This is available on just the ultimate trim level. As you can see, really unique look. I, I think this looks absolutely fantastic with the uh, gray finish, the color contrast piping. I will say it's a little rougher than I thought it would be uh, once I actually feel of it. But overall, like I said, very aesthetically pleasing seat, also very comfortable as well. Down below, you have 10 ways of power adjustment at least, but we have the ultimate, so we have additional adjustment for the power thigh extension and power bolsters. You can also get massaging on this model if you add the lounge package. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now that I'm fully inside here, I can talk about one of my favorite things about the XC90. It's been this way since this model first came out, and that's just how luxurious and well executed this cabin is. So let's talk materials. Over here with our door trim, we have a full leather covering. In the center section, we're gonna have a big insert of that wool trim to match with the seats. We have another insert of a beautiful open pour wood and across all of the upper part here is going to be full leather. Additionally, I do wanna mention, since I didn't mention it earlier, you do have standard three person memory on both the driver and the passenger side. Moving to the upper dashboard, all this on the ultimate model is gonna be the tailored dashboard, so full leather covering. As we move down to the center, more wood trim, more leather on the lower sections, more leather along through here, and more beautiful open pour wood. Just a really gorgeous cabin, even though this model has been out for quite a while at this point. Now, to start it up, you're going to twist this knob. Now I went ahead and moved into a first person perspective to take a closer look at the details. First off right here, we've got our 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. This was actually updated just last year to a new high resolution version that's also running the latest Google-based software. You'll see that with the infotainment system as well. That means it does have Google Maps right there in the center, or you can turn that off if you prefer. If you have the ultimate trim level as well, you are gonna have a head up display. Now pulling back to the steering wheel, typical Volvo affair here. Um, you've got that classic design. It is going to be manual tilt and telescoping across all models, but you will have steering wheel heating if you choose the plus version or above. All right, let's go ahead and move into interior storage next. Now this model really doesn't have a ton of storage for a uh, three row vehicle, in the front that is. So as you can see, center console, relatively small, does have a USB-C port inside. Um, this is a very expensive SUV as well, so instead of bringing in along the coupons today, we brought the fat stacks of cash. So let's see if we can fit those in there. Looks like they're gonna fit in there, no problem whatsoever. Full disclosure, this is fake. Please don't come and rob us. Now, up in front of that, you have two cup holders. You have another little storage cubby right there, 12 volt outlet, 
and in the front a little slot that's just big enough for your key fob there's no wireless phone charging pad they had to eliminate that uh, last year in 2023 and they still don't haven't added it back quite yet now moving over here to the shifter this was another one of the 2023 updates it was moving to a full electronic shifter also since we have the ultimate trim level that means we have the beautiful full crystal shifter i love the feel of this looks very luxurious as well and operation super simple pull back for drive press forward for reverse when you're in reverse you're going to see first off a traditional view here with your parking sensors at the top but you can also tap right there and that will take you into the 360 degree camera view gives you that nice overhead look you can also individually choose which camera you want to dis display through there and this is going to be on the plus trim and the ultimate trim of course press the p for park back behind that you do have an electronic parking brake with a brake hold function rising above to the center section here uh, we do have a traditional volume knob to control one of three different audio systems so it starts with a 10 speaker sound system you have a middle a 14 speaker Harman Kardon option, or you can go all out, spend $3,200 and get the 19 speaker, 1400 watt Bauer and Wilkins premium audio. I'm happy to report that is what we have today. So let's go ahead and give that a sample. Holy crap, definitely never gets old over the past seven days listening to this sound system. This is truly one of the very best sound systems money can buy no matter what type of vehicle you're shopping in. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, now let's talk about the main display here. So like I had already mentioned uh, when it comes to the gauge cluster, last year this was upgraded to a new Google-based software. So Gone is kind of the classic census, but it is still in the same display. So you've got that home button there and kind of a tablet-like structure for this 9-inch display. What's different is the fact you're going to have some native Google apps built in. So for instance, I click that and I'm inside of Google Maps built in with live traffic, things like that. Pretty cool. As far as other functionality, you have um, Apple CarPlay as well. You got a couple additional apps. One of them is the air quality app, which is usually not useful here in Kentucky, but we're dealing with some of the wildfire smoke from Canada. So as you can see, the air quality on the outside is not too fantastic today. Yes, also inside of this display is gonna be your climate controls. So you're gonna access those by clicking down here at the bottom. You can adjust driver and passenger, of course, independently. It is standard four zone automatic, so both the rear passengers will have their own adjustments as well. And then off to the side of that is where you can access your standard three stage heated seats as well as that heated steering we always mentioning earlier. You will notice though, that even though this is the ultimate model, which usually comes standard with ventilated seats, um, that actually cannot be paired with the wool. So we do not have seat ventilation on this example. Moving above, we've got an auto dimming mirror, three home link universal remotes built into it. And then if you swipe back on this touch sensitive pad, that's going to open up the sunshade to our standard panoramic sunroof. As you can see, nice and large piece of glass, the front portion does open up as well. Now it's a family three row. So let's go ahead and hop on back here in this XC90 and see what it has to offer. Now, as far as the space is concerned, let's go ahead and check that out first. 37 inches of leg room, 38 and a half inches of headroom. So as far as how that compares to some of its rivals, that is going to slot it just below the Acura MDX. It's also going to be below the Audi Q7 as well, but not by a huge margin. It's still a pretty good amount of space. Um, unless you're unusually large or whatnot, you're going to fit back here in this uh, second row perfectly fine. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who's five foot eight. I'm five foot nine for reference, and we're sitting at about six and a half inches of knee space and my feet can easily slide up underneath of the seat. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that I can also recline the seat if I can find the little lever here. So I can recline a pretty good distance. 
as well as slide it forward and back to either minimize my space or maximize my third row space or maximize my second row space, whatever I'm gonna need. So that is nice. Another thing I wanna point out is that we have the bench chair set up in the back. That means that we have seven passenger seating in this XC90. You can also get a captain's chair set up, which gives you six passenger seating. Now here in the center, let's talk about features. This is a luxury SUV after all, so what are we gonna get? Well, here in the center, we have this little touchscreen thing, and once we push the unlock button, that allows you to adjust your climate controls. Um, so we do have standard four zone climate, as Drew said, in the front, which means that both rear passengers can adjust their own temperatures back here. We also have three stage heated rear seats, which I will not be using to get more sweaty crack because it is hot out here today. Um, and that is on plus trim levels and above. Vents below that. We also have vents here in the B pillar, so getting air blown in from both sides. I like that. As far as other things, two USB C's here in the middle. And then as far as this middle seat, it does also do a little something cool. We have an integrated booster seat for those of you that have kids. If you want to go for a plus trim level and above, that will uh, get you this integrated booster seat. Turn to the door trim. Uh, over here, we're going to have a really nice one. We have rear window sunshades, as you can see right here. They are going to be manual. And then down below that, leather wrapping on all this portion. Beautiful wood trim. We have some more of that wool. And then in the very bottom, we do have some bottle storage. It's really just a beautifully crafted door trim. And you can feel that even here in the rear of this XC90. And let's check out the third row. Um, so in order to get back here, it's pretty easy. You just push this little lever. Oh, no, it is not. Wrong one. Apparently not easy enough for me. <laughs> I've done it a hundred times too. This little lever right here on the top, that allows you to lift or kind of fold the seat forward and slide it out of the way. I will say uh, some of the other competitors do offer a little bit easier of a setup. MDX, just one press. This requires a little bit more strength, that's for sure. Now let's go ahead and sit back here in the third row of the XC90. So getting back here, it is a, a little tight, but I actually spent pretty extensive seat time in the third row because we like to test our vehicles out. If we have them for seven days, we want to, you know, really put them through their paces. And this third row is pretty good. Um, we're looking at 31.9 inches of leg room, about 36 inches of headroom, which does mean that this is larger than Acura MDX. It's also larger than Audi Q7. So we're going to have a pretty good amount of space back here in this third row. Um, I did bring my bendy ruler because we like to measure things at car confections. We have zero inches of leg room uh, left, but do keep in mind this seat is slid all the way back. My feet can slide up underneath the seat. The thigh support is surprisingly good in this XC90. Do keep in mind though, only two seats back here. So um, you're not gonna have three people fitting in the back of this um, third row. So do keep that in mind. As far as other things I wanna point out feature wise, we do have rear vents. Um, integrated here in the C pillars. We have a cup holder as well, a little storage cubby, no USB ports to charge things though. So that's something I'm a little disappointed by. Now walking up to the tailgate of the XC90, we have a standard hands-free power one across the board. So that's a nice feature that they are including. And once we head into the cargo area, we also have a pretty good amount of space here. We're looking at 16 cubic foot of cargo capacity behind the third row seats. If we reach up and fold them down, we're gonna expand that cargo capacity up to about 42 cubic feet. And then if we fold all the seats down, we are looking at a maximum of 85 cubic feet. Now, if you're comparing that to some of its rivals like the Acura MDX, that is going to be larger than the Acura MDX. Um, certainly it makes it one of the largest uh, three row midsize SUVs in the segment. Um, so you're gonna have a pretty good amount of cargo capacity. Uh, there are some things that I wanna talk about though. The cargo capacity is the bright spot. I will talk about some things that I don't like here in just a second. Now, underneath the floor, we have your cord for charging this vehicle. We also have a little storage over there on the side, a 12 volt outlet, but you saw me manually fold down the third row. There also are no handles to fold the second row from the cargo area. So we have to manually fold the third row. And if we want to fold the second row, we have to walk up here and fold it down. And then we also have to find the strap for the middle seat because it folds 40, 20, 40 split folding to fold that one down. And then we have to go all the way over to the other side to fold this one down. And then that gives you your maximum cargo capacity. 
And one other thing that I want to point out while I'm talking about it is that there is no strap to fold up the third row from the cargo area. So if you want to fold up the third row, you actually have to fold down the second row and then manually lift it up like that because there's no strap, which I think is really kind of weird. Uh, I've never really seen a vehicle that didn't have a strap, but this XC90 is one of them that does. Now, I do want to get our measurement from the driver's seat all the way back to the rear of the cargo area. We're looking at a solid 84 inches of space uh, from the seat back to the rear of the cargo area, which does mean we're just shy of being able to fit a full-size couch in this XC90's area, but we would be able to fit a full-size refrigerator in this XC90. Well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2024 Volvo XC90 in its Recharge T8 uh, model. So this is the most powerful XC90 that you can buy and we're certainly excited to show you what this vehicle is capable of. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things uh, as you would expect for a luxury SUV as you can see on the screen right now, um, including getting our sound level reading. But first, let's go ahead and start with a hard acceleration in this very sporty model of the XC90. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> Dang. Quite fast. <laughs> um, as you would expect, uh, this does have 455 horsepower. That's a lot of power. And they've really upgraded this hybrid system throughout the years. As I mentioned at the spec dump, you have also you know, a quite large battery pack as well since this is a plug-in hybrid. 18.8 kilowatt hours um, and all this works together like I said 455 horsepower 523 pound-feet of torque so it's certainly enough to push you back in your seat yeah the 0 to 60 is actually rated at five seconds flat which for a big three row like this uh, certainly is very, oh, yeah. very quick. Um, now, of course, there are other powertrain options. There's the B6 and B5 uh, powertrain options. Um, the B6 model is probably the most popular choice of the XC90, I would suppose. Um, that is 295 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. The B5 uh, is the weakest one at 247 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Uh, so I certainly would recommend at least going for the B6 or the uh, T8 recharge model like what we have today. Yeah, and starting last year, they became mild hybrid. So every XC90 will have some form of electrification, although, you know, that's not a lot of electrification since it's just a mild hybrid system. You do have just a little battery pack to support it. This one here, though, is the one that's really going to give you the kind of the ultimate of everything, in a sense. You have the ultimate range, the ultimate performance. Um, and of course, this is the ultimate trim as well. Yeah, so, so it really is all fitting, right? <laughs> now, as far as the other parts of the powertrain, you do have an eight speed automatic transmission. Even though this is a hybrid, it does have the same eight speed as the other models in the lineup. And through our week of testing, we've been you know, completely satisfied with this transmission. It's nice and smooth. Um, really, that's kind of the focus of a model like this is just to be smooth and refined and uh, you don't really feel it working or anything like that. And yeah, another thing worth noting is that all wheel drive is standard equipment on the XC90. Uh, front wheel drive uh, was discontinued, I believe, last year uh, on this vehicle. So now it's just going to be all wheel drive exclusive, which certainly is good, especially for putting down the power for this full uh, ultimate recharge model that's for sure and i think most people were choosing that anyhow but we've now made it to a designated strip of road where we talk about ride quality as well as get us our sound level reading so um this XC90, I do want to talk about this. The ride quality has been very, very impressive over the last seven days that we've driven this vehicle. Um, now, in all fairness, we do have the optional air suspension on this model. I believe it's an $1,800 option on this XC90, and it definitely does a good job of smoothing out the bumps. Um, when you hit a bump, it has little to no intrusion into the cabin. There's maybe a slight degree, a slight feel of it, but not much whatsoever. Yeah, I would say it's very comfortable. It's maybe just a little behind something yeah. like the vehicle I just drove by, the Mercedes GLE yeah. with air ride, but 
we're talking small amounts. This is still supremely comfortable, and I think that's, you know, what people are obviously chasing after. You do have a little bit more ground clearance as well if you want that. And it also, it's pretty uh, usable as well. It can lower when you're loading things into the rear cargo area um, to make it just easier to live with this vehicle. So I think it's a good option to check off, especially if you're going for a fully loaded model. All right, let's get our sound level reading going 55 miles per hour. Very impressive. We have settled in at 52.9 decibels. It's our official sound level reading for this XC90 recharge model. And you know what I'm going to do because that sound level reading isn't all that useful if you can't compare it to its rivals. Well, I'm going to go to carconfections.com because on there I can sort by everything this vehicle competes with and see some of the quietest options in the segment as well as the louder options that maybe I should avoid. Um, so certainly that's a very useful feature and we want you to go to the website as well and check that out for yourself. And now that I've done that, you know where this new XC90 falls? It's actually number one in the segment is the quietest in the segment ever so slightly beat out the Acura MDX Advance that we tested out a little mm. earlier this year. So. Uh, that's really impressive, and I don't doubt it whatsoever, because after living with this vehicle for the last week, it just seems completely hushed in this cabin, which is phenomenal because we have that amazing uh, audio system, so I don't want to hear the wind noise. I want to hear the audio system, and it certainly has been uh, very nice over the last week. Now we're kind of heading out onto a little bit of a country road. This is where we like to talk about dynamics and you know just kind of overall handling characteristics. So for this XC90, obviously this is not a sporty SUV. That's not no. really the intention <laughs> behind this model whatsoever. Um, it's really geared towards you know keeping you in ultimate comfort and just having a really nice luxury experience. As such, I think it nails its mission. Um, it's certainly not going to be sporty when you take it on a, a back road like this. That being said, it is not bad. Um, as we kind of go around a corner here. Body control is pretty good for a three row SUV. Um, additionally, it doesn't feel enormous either. Uh, some kind of three row SUVs can just feel like you're driving a school bus. This one doesn't yeah. feel like that at all. I have uh, a good sense of where the wheels are placed as I uh, navigate the twists and turns of this road. I will say the steering, very, very light. Yeah. If you put it in the firm mode, it's a little heavier, but it doesn't have a lot of feel. Again, that's pretty much expected. I would say it's you know pretty equivalent to something like an MDX. Yeah. Now, you're probably also curious about our uh, range for this plug-in hybrid model. How far does it go? It does have that 18.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, it's rated by the EPA to go 32 miles on a charge. Uh, we did do a real world EPA, or real world, not EPA, real world <laughs> range test um, with this XC90 to kind of show you guys what we were getting uh, on the daily with this vehicle. And I think you're gonna really want to see that. It has a little bit of a surprise Result. So go to that video, check it out, see what we got in the real world because I think you're going to be very happy by that number if that's a hint for you right there. Um, as far as the fuel economy on some of the other models, if you don't choose for the recharge, it's 24 miles a gallon with the B5, 23 MPG if you choose the B6 combined. And now we do want to talk about our air ball and slam dunk. That's another thing we like to do here at Car Confections. Drew, what is our slam dunk with this XC90? Um, I would say really just the kind of overall execution of the cabin. I mentioned it in the interior, but it's just so nice in here. Yeah. And this is, you know, an older model. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that's this age and still feels special. And this does feel special when you're inside of it. It's just so much luxury. I love the audio system. 
and the overall design is unique. It doesn't look like a German model, for instance. Um, it has a lot more character to it. Yeah, and as far as our air ball is concerned, there were a few different things that we could pick, but I do think that the worst thing about this vehicle is the technology. It's starting to show its age the most when it comes to the technology. I mean, that just kind of is what it is. With the age, you know, as we've seen, throughout this review it's aged really well but the tech kind of shows off a little bit we don't even have android auto at all on this no wireless car play and that's something that buyers expect especially when you're paying this type of money for a luxury vehicle and as far as your warranty is concerned it's volvo signature warranty for your 50,000 miles for basic and powertrain no complimentary maintenance and let's talk price for the xc90 so for 2024, prices are not going to really rise much for this model. As you would expect, it's not hugely different from the previous model year. So we're looking at $56,000 as a starting point, $60,900 for the Plus B6, uh, $69,400 for Ultimate B6, and then Ultimate T8 starts at $79,600. Now, as far as this model, we do have uh, pretty heavy-handed on the options, um, and we do have that fully loaded T8 recharge model, Ultimate. We're looking at about $85,500 if you want to check most of the boxes, and I believe you can almost get this car to ninety dollars if you opted for a few more options past what we have on this model. And guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this in-depth seven-day review of the 2024 Volvo XC90 Recharge Ultimate. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you allow us to have these vehicles to test out for a full week to give you extensive uh, testing and reporting on, range test, all of those good things. That's brought possible... or that is made possible by you guys subscribing to our channel. So thank you so much for that. Also, if you're a current subscriber, we really appreciate your support over the last years. Also, if you haven't had the chance to check out our Instagram and TikTok pages, please go ahead and do that, as well as check out our all-new website, carconfections.com. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.